so the first review is not going to be favorable. I'll just say that and get it out of the way. Um, the first book that I read was Secrets of the Tarot, Origins, History, and Symbolism. And this is by Barbara Walker, Barbara G. Walker, um, who's also the author of the Women's Encyclopedia of Myths and Secrets. Um, how I Know Her is as a Knitter. So she's also written a number of very informative and very helpful knitting books, including this one. Uh, it's called Knitting from the Top. And this is a fantastic book. I've talked about it before. It's a very feminist, um, egalitarian approach to designing your own knitwear to fit your own body. So she talks about taking the measurements of your body exactly as it is, and then designing garments to fit it or to adapt garments to fit it. And it's a wonderful book. Um, it's really sort of a workbook where you work through a recipe for a garment and then take a bunch of measurements and figure that out. Oh, I just, sorry, I just looked inside the front cover. This was the first sweater I ever knit and it was for my partner. And here's all my, my measurements and my check marks and trying to figure out like based on how big he was and then how, um, how the sweater pattern played out, what stitch counts I needed to hit on each section. So, and, and I did, I worked, you know, with her recipes, I worked through that and I was able to make a, a, a sort of wonky first sweater, but it was a sweater. Um, so I really have a lot of respect for Barbara Walker in this context. Um, unfortunately, she's not as good of a historian as she is a knitwear um, counselor. <laughs> this book is so, so, so problematic on so many levels. Um, but really it comes down to her sources and then her made up stuff. So um, I tried to read this. Laura and I actually tried to read this together and Laura, to her credit, actually got further into the book than I did. I just got, I sort of gave up in frustration um, because it was so infuriating. So the problem on the first hand is with her sources. The problem with the sources is that they're very biased, they're very colonial, and they're very skewed and distort accurate information about various cultures that she's citing in here. So her her main sort of gist of the book is that there there must have been or there must be some common universal religious practices that tie together every non-theistic religion throughout time and geography of the world. And that's simply not true. And but in order to try to make this point that there's this like proto or this feminist religion that sort of underlies the patriarchy and kind of subverts it, which I think is like a noble idea, she completely bowls over actual history and, and makes up a bunch of stuff. And then she also cites people that make up their own stuff. So I'll give you I'll give you the one of the most flagrant examples which is she talks about tantric Buddhism a lot, which is a little strange because I don't think she's ever formally studied tantric Buddhism or any form of Buddhism. But one of the main sources she cites is uh, Augustine Waddell and his book, which she lists in the bibliography as having been published in 1972. But I looked up the book and that's a reprint from 1895. And anytime you have a white European <laughs> writing about a non-European culture in the Victorian times, that's automatically a red flag because those cultures were not well studied and understood at that time. So um, Waddell served in uh, a British expedition. He was in the military and he served in the British expedition that annexed Upper Burma is what I read. Um, which means, you know, they went to Burma, they killed a bunch of people, and they took over the government there. So through his various expeditions in India and Burma and Tibet, you know, of course, he, get, he gets interested, he gets intrigued and obsessed with Tibetan culture, and su studies <laughs> Tibetan culture and writes this book called Tibetan Buddhism. But he didn't officially study with a teacher. He didn't get official teachings. He just observed the people that there were, they were there to colonize and wrote down a bunch of his impressions and called it anthropology. So 
you know, that, that kind of shows you the caliber of source that Barbara Walker is relying on. And, you know, I'll give her the benefit of the doubt and say that maybe she didn't realize this. She, you know, she's writing in the 80s. It was harder to do research back then. But it's problematic. And I talked, you know, I did talk with Laura and we kind of compared notes. And she said, yeah, you know, a lot of the cultural and, you know, so-called um, uh, other, uh, what do I want to say, like gender studies and, and that kind of thing that's cited in here is also really problematic. Or like sources on Druidry and paganism that she cites are also problematic in that they're completely misinformed. So when you base your entire book on these kinds of sources, obviously you're going to get a very distorted picture. Um, the other thing that Walker does that's problematic is she just makes up stuff, especially around language and terminology and how there are these fake parallels between languages or cultures. For example, you know, she starts to talk about the Isle of Man and how man means moon or sounds like the word moon and therefore it was the Isle of the Moon and therefore there were a bunch of moon worshiping people that lived in the Isle of Man. <laughs> but man means mountain, it doesn't mean moon. You know, so, so it's like you've gone on this whole tangent about this linguistic thing that you supposedly discovered that's just not true. Um, and she does it, you know, with uh, deities and figures across cultures as well. Um, she also assigns a lot of heft to things like menstrual cycles and lactation and, you know, other bodily functions of XX chromosome folks. So it's it's just got lots of layers of problematic stuff. And it's really a shame because... I think an exploration of these topics is very interesting, and I'm sure there are parallels between certain cultures and certain time periods, but it's just not as universal as she wants to portray it. And because she makes so many factual errors in her book, it's really hard to take any of her ideas very seriously. So I do not recommend <laughs> Barbara Walker's writing on the tarot. I probably don't recommend her Women's Encyclopedia of Myths and Secrets either, assuming that it's researched along the same lines. And then as to the, the deck itself, um, I can show you some images uh, from that. So let's see if I can figure out. Yeah, there we go. So <laughs> you can see my, my exacerbation notes down there. So this is her deck and she did do all the images um, for this. She painted all of these paintings. And so again, I can respect her as an artist right? It's cool. Anybody who designs a tarot deck from scratch earns, you know, a bit of respect in my mind. But when you get down to what she's done here, she's, re she's just rehashed the Golden Dawn, particularly in her keywords on uh, the numbered cards. And these are, I would say 90% of these are basically right out of the Golden Dawn playbook. And so if you, if you say, if you profess that your mission is to create a feminist deck that, you know, overthrows patriarchal ideas, et cetera, et cetera, and then you go in and you just regurgitate a bunch of patriarchal ideas that are based on Rosicrucian beliefs and, you know, out of institutions that are very heavily patriarchal, I'm not sure that you accomplished what you set out to do um, very well. So I think her imagery can be compelling, but her ideas are not, they're not really well seated in any kind of original way of thinking based on solid facts. So it's unfortunate. <laughs> um, it's really unfortunate when your heroes let you down, but sometimes you have to be willing to kind of go there and un unpack that and not just trust um, you have to really do your own research and understand what it is that you're that you're reading. I guess my takeaway from this is like, because um, I thought this was going to be like my dark goddess deck. I thought, oh, finally, like someone that I respect has, you know, done this because she's put a lot of um, goddesses from various cultures into this deck. And a lot of the dark goddess decks out there that are on the market are also very problematic. They're very culturally appropriative. They don't actually represent the goddesses in the way that they are represented in their native cultures or religions. And I thought this would be the solution to that. And it turns out it's it's almost worse. So go out there and do your research. And before you buy a Dark Goddess deck or before you buy a Goddess deck or before you buy 
you know, something that proclaims itself to be inclusive or feminist or whatever, I would say research the author, look at their sources, you know, see if you can preview some of their citations and kind of get an idea before you invest your money. So that is my cautionary tale. And if you want to find an excellent book by Barbara Walker and read something that is wholesome and helpful, get one of her knitting books because they really are great. 